In this video, let's make a few scatter plots with Excel. And what we're also going to do is we're going to put some trend lines in there. And trend lines sometimes help us visualize the relationship that might be in a scatter plot. Now we make scatter plots using two quantitative variables, one on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. And let's just pick the first two variables here that are quantitative in this data set that has a list of 93 different cars. And the data here is really old from the year 1993, but it's data from Consumer Reports that has the minimum price, horsepower, average price paid, highway miles per gallon, and some other things. So let's, let's look at a few of these scatter plots to see is there a relationship between some of these variables. So let's look at the minimum price and the horsepower just because these are right next to each other. And what Excel will normally do is put the variable that's on the left hand side on the X axis of the scatter plot and the variable on the right hand side on the Y axis. And this is the minimum price in thousands of dollars. So let's select these two variables and then let's go to insert and over here on the charts area, there's a little one that has dots and it says insert scatter XY chart. And let's just pick the basic kind of chart here. And there's our scatter plot. Now, what I wish Excel would do is label the X and the Y axis automatically. Now we can kind of tell, and also I, I told you that the general rule that Excel uses is the variable on the left goes on the x-axis and that's what it's done. Variable on the right is on the y-axis. But still when you make a scatter plot you want to make sure to label these. So let's right click is one way to do it. Another way to do it is it, that sometimes is a little quicker is go to click on the design tab here and go to add chart element and axes titles we want to add a primary vertical and a primary horizontal axis so the vertical axis is the y-axis let's click in here and delete the words axis title and tell people what this is this is horsepower and we probably want to move this graph over a little bit so that we can actually read the title there, horsepower. And then let's do the same thing. Let's add an x-axis here. So add chart element, axis title, primary horizontal. Click in here, delete that text, and tell people that this is the minimum price in thousands. So now let's look and see what we have. Uh, and we probably want to give a better title here, telling people that this is a scatter plot. And you know, maybe a more informative title than that, but let's just see what we have here. It looks generally like we have an upward sloping relationship where which we would call a positive relationship or a direct relationship, where more expensive cars in general seem to have higher horsepower. Now, if you ever have a scatter plot where it's a little hard to judge or it's hard to see what that relationship looks like, then what we can do is add a trend line. Some people will also call this a regression line. So if you want to add a trend line, right click on one of the dots in your scatter plot and go to add trend line. And you see a lot of options here on the right. Do you want to add a curve? Do you want to add a straight line? In general, you want to stick with a straight line unless you actually see a curved relationship, and then you can try that. But let's just add a, a straight line, linear trend line here, and that looks fine to me. So it added it as a dotted line. We can change the format of that if we want. But what this does is, is roughly give us a line of best fit. That if we were to use a straight line to explain this relationship between price and horsepower, that's what that line would look like. And what we see here is that the relationship is 
a pretty good one, but the relationship looks like it's a much closer relationship, meaning the, the points are much more tightly grouped, where we can see that as the price goes up, the horsepower goes up at the bottom. But as we get to higher and higher horsepower vehicles, this relationship becomes less defined, less clear. There's a lot more spread above and below the line. Let's look at a, another example here to see what happens. Now, let's. this is a positive relationship. Let's see if we can find a couple of variables that have a negative relationship. And let me cut this, and I'm going to move it to a separate sheet. So let's go back to the data. Something that probably has a negative relationship would be perhaps horsepower and miles per gallon. As you get a bigger engine, the miles per gallon you get probably goes down. We could, we could look at horsepower or we could look at engine size and probably get the same relationship. Let's use horsepower. So I'm going to select the horsepower variable. And now I'm on a Windows computer. If I want to select another variable that's not adjacent, select one variable and then let's hold down the control key and then select the second variable. And then release the control key. That way we can select two variables that are not right next to each other. And we do the same thing. Insert, go to the scatter plot. And again, we probably want to label these axes, but for now we can kind of see what's going on. This is horsepower on the x-axis and this is miles per gallon on the y-axis. And in this case we see a negative relationship. In general, as the horsepower gets higher, we see that these vehicles get lower miles per gallon. Now this one kind of looks like a curve though. Let's insert a trend line and let's, let's start with a straight line and just see what that looks like. You see this line uh, there's a lot of points that are way above the line here, but not too many below it on the left. Most of the points are above the trend line, or all the points are above the trend line on the right. So that suggests that maybe a curved relationship might be something we want to look into here. So you can say right click, add trend line, and just pick one of these other curve shapes. Exponential, logarithmic, power, etc and we can see if we can get one and you see that it's inserting it as we go so that we can get an idea of what it'll look like. A polynomial might do a, the job, a power might do the job and maybe we'll go with power. And let's, let's delete the straight line there so that we don't get confused between the two. And we can see that that curve might give us an idea of what that relationship looks like just a little bit better than the straight line did. Now let me do one more scatter plot, and I'm going to do try to do one where we're not going to see a very clear relationship when we make it. So let me move this just in case we want to look back at it at a future date or a future time. Let's make a scatter plot between, say, the minimum price. And then again, I'm going to hold down the control here. And let's use, um, the U-turn radius. Maybe those have a relationship and maybe they don't. Let's see. Insert. Scatter plot. And boy, it's sure kind of sure hard to see if anything's going on there. Now, although when people when professionals make graphs, generally we do have a preference that the origin is in the graph, unless there's a really good reason not to. Sometimes that can distort the way the graph looks. Here, since most of this data, the um, so here the price is on the x-axis, the u-turn radius is on the y-axis. 
there's very little going on except for between 30 and 50. Maybe we do want to zoom in on the y-axis and get rid of this empty space. Let's just see if that changes our perception of what's going on here. So I'm right-clicking. I went to Format Axis. Let's change the minimum to 30 and just see if that reveals any kind of pattern that we weren't seeing before. We do see a, a that there's a is a large cluster over here that seems to have a positive relationship but then we have all these other points over here on the right that's kind of lead us to believe maybe there isn't so much of a a positive relationship anymore again if we if we want to get an idea of what excel thinks by doing some calculations we can insert a trend line and the trend line seems to tell us that the, the majority of the data is suggesting a positive relationship, but it's very, it's, it's not what I would call a very clear or very strong relationship here between the price and the U-turn. In general, we might expect more expensive cars to maybe be a little larger, and that larger cars might require a larger distance in order to make a U-turn but it's not a very clear result here. So here we see three different graphs that we've made using scatter plots that give us sort of three somewhat different results. A fairly clear positive relationship, a fairly clear but somewhat curved negative relationship, and then a very unclear, kind of muddy, murky positive relationship between price and U-turn. So I hope, you, I hope you've learned something and found this a little bit interesting about how to make scatter plots, how to look at them, and interpret what's going on a little bit. This is Berkey Academy signing off. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.